Hello everyone, I am Bradley Sword, Associate Professor of Computer and Information Science at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois, and today we're going to look at data transfers, basic arithmetic operations in x86 assembly language. We're going to look at an example, basically your uh, Activity 06 example problem. So um, right over here, let me just close this down and go over and open this up a little bit. This is my problem. You might have one that is similar but not identical. Uh, they're all pretty much the same kind of deal. So this problem is in C++, so I imported it into Visual Studio using the C++ uh, component so I could see what I'm supposed to be getting out of this, you know, so I know <laughs> if, if I can get the right answers, then I can get the, you know, then I know I did everything correctly. So if I run this, I, I did put some C outs in here. Let me, let me just show you what I did here, just because the program itself doesn't come with it. I didn't want to confuse people more than already than a lot of people already get when it comes to solving this. You can see, there we go there. So these are my answers that I'm supposed to be getting. Let me copy that into uh, the other Visual Studio when we go. And um, I think we're ready. That Those are the numbers we're supposed to get, and we're supposed to do these arithmetic operations and do some prints and see what happens. Okay, so now I have Visual Studio open two times. I have my C++ program here on the left, and I have my assembly language program by, you know, here on the right. I guess I could change this to say Activity 06. And so we're ready to start, and I can prove that it works because I hit F5, I run, and nothing happens. At the moment that window starts up, nothing is occurring because there's nothing running. So let's just kind of get to it. So these global variables, they're commented for a reason, shorts. A short is two bytes of storage on, th on this version of C++, and it's signed. So this is a signed word, S-W-O-R-D, as opposed to my last name. And we're just going to say A, and A gets a 5. Signed word, B, S word. I just have to, and then just 6. And I'm just going, since we're doing this eight times, I'm just going to copy-paste that and just kind of go, go along, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H, and the one thing C that is funny, haha, -ha funny about this is C is actually a keyword in MASM, and some because C actually stands for C, the programming language apparently, and it's because there's ways you can hook assembly language up into C, write your code in assembly language, and still call it from a C++ program. So I'm gonna call, I'm gonna forget, but I'm gonna call C C C here, and so five, six, seven, eight is what is A, B, C, and D. And you're like, why don't I just use A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D? Because D, D is actually a keyword. And I didn't want, I just don't want things getting too confused. And so in this case here, E, F, G, and H, you, you're like, I'll just leave it blank. Well, I'll just give you, I'll just give you points off because that won't compile or it won't assemble because I have to put the question mark to leave that as uninitialized data. So that is how you set up the global variables for this case, all signed words. And if you had uh, if you had characters, you'd be using signed bytes, and if you had ints, you'd be using signed double words. Okay, so now moving on. So let's let's just kind of look at this one line at a time. Let me steal this. Just give me a second here to comment, move this, and comment. There we go. So we can kind of approximate what we're trying to do. Oh, why, why am I? Why am I doing? Tab, 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 tab. Okay, so now we're ready to go. So let's take a look here and say, I'm going to increment D. I can just say inc D. That's all I have to say. And um, I'm just going to leave a little space here because I'm just taking D and I'm adding one to it. And there's an operation called inc for increment. And there's dec for decrement. And I'm going to just decrement CC. Hey, I remembered. And that's all I have to do for that line of code. And so now you say some of these take a little, you know, take more than a little effort here. And so let me just add a little space between this here. Oh, no, geez, please. And so now I'm going to take A plus 2 and put it into B. So I'm going to move. Uh, I don't like this much, but that's okay. I am going to move into, now what register? If this was, a, if, you know, so there's a difference between like AX, AH, AL, and EAX. Those are all version, those are all parts of the, the one big whole EAX register. And since I'm using signed word, or the signed really doesn't matter, I'm using word, I'm using 16 bits. And because I'm using 16 bits, I'm going to use AX. I can use AX, BX, CX, DX, but there's no reason to do anything. And I'm just going to move A into that. 
and then, and it's just one of those, I just have to do this, because I can't just add 2 to A, because I'm, I'm not allowed to do that. I'm supposed to take A. A is supposed to, re, you know, stay unchanged as I'm doing this. And now I can take whatever's in the AX register, add 2 to it. So it's a copy of A that's being modified and added to 2. Oops, let me move this down a bit, because this is not what we want to do. And then, at the end of the day, now I want to move into B, whatever is in the AX register. So this is A plus 2 goes into B. That's what, and you, that's pretty much, once, we, once you understand that, it's, everything is pretty much simple from there. I'm done with AX for, for this, so I can reuse it. And it's just going to be the same thing all over again. I'm just going to move into AX register D. I am going to add to, the, to AX register 9. And I'm going to move into the into to A, whatever's in A. And so just continuing on, just give me one second here, and I will continue. Okay, so they get they start getting a little more complicated, of course, right? So I'm going to start here. I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to move into the AX register A. And then I am going to add to the AX register. I'm going to add B. I am going to subtract from the AX register C. I'm going to subtract from the AX register D. And then I'm going to move the result into the E variable. All right, so that does that problem. And so now I'm just going to, for this one, I'm going to move into the AX register C. I am going to negate it with that operation. Oops, I got to remember. I remember CC. Okay, negate that, and then I am going to move that into F. And that does that problem. All right, two more to go for our first part anyway. And so now moving on here, I'm going to take move into the AX register, move F. Oops, sorry. I am then going to add E. AX register. And it's, at this point, I might have made a mistake, but, but I don't know yet. You probably are looking at that and go, oh, Brad, what are you doing? But I will find out in a minute when I go to run this. Move G and then AX into that. All right. And one more to go. Oh, goodness. Here's a fun one. Okay. So I'm going to move into AX register. I'm going to move B. Then I am going to go ahead and negate the AX register, which makes B negative B. Uh, I don't think I had, uh, yeah, I, I did that up here for this one. And so now I have negative B sitting in front of me, and now I'm going to uh, subtract to AX register C. I am going to add to the AX register A, and then I'm going to move. Don't forget to move back, otherwise nothing's going to work for you, into this move H. So let's see what we get now. So that's the first part. That's all of this stuff, but now we have to print. And this is where things might get a little tricky for you. Maybe, maybe not. So what I want to do here, I want to, and it says move A into the E. Oh, I just, there we go. Move A into EAX, move B into EBX, move C into ECX, and move D into EDX. First thing I want to do, I want to make sure that this thing assembles, that I didn't have any simple syntax errors, especially with the C. Oh, there's one. All right, I have one. And now I fixed that up. So now, okay, everything works. But nothing will print. All that hard work and nothing comes out of this just the same as anything we did before. So now what I want to do is I want to say, oh, I want to move into the, like I'm saying, move EAX comma A. But you try that and it will not work. You will get instruction operands must be the same size because A is a signed word, which is 16 bits. EAX register is, a, is 32 bits. And so this just makes it a little easier do things. You could do it like this, move A into AX. That will work, but you, but things will be a little weird for you when you go to run the program and you call dump regs and stuff like that. And this is a learning opportunity as well, that I can take A, which is a 16-bit quantity, I can extend it, basically a static cast, from short into int, and I can do that by, say, move sign extension. And it's a, the, one of the only five-letter versions, or five-letter operands, or operations language. And so this will take, and put the EAX there, 
This will take A, which is 16 bits, and it will extend it into the full 32 bits. It'll ex if it's a since it's doing the signed version, if it's positive, it'll extend out zeros into that space, and if it's negative, it'll extend out ones. So this will actually build even though there's a mismatch. There are very few operations in this language that will allow those kind of mismatches to occur. And so just now repeating the process. Do that, and then it said call dump regs, which will show me everything, <laughs> dump reg, dump regs, and it'll put everything out there. And now let's see what happens when I run. Okay, so now, oops, did I, oh shoot, let me, I don't remember what I have, what I'm supposed to be getting for my answer. So let us see this. Let me run this program over here. I can have both up on here at the same time. So we're only doing the first line here, and you're looking at this, and we're like, you're like, oh, wrong. Brad, you're wrong. What's wrong with you? They go, nope, I think, I, well, I'm, well, I have to check it out here, but I think I'm pretty correct because all of this stuff that prints out in dump regs is in hex, hex code here. So 12 in hex is 18, positive 18. 7 is 7. And now this is the fun one. Oops, I got, oops, I'm getting negative 6 or negative 5 or something like that. So I, I might have screwed up the CC part of this. I'll have to take a look. And then the D part is correct. So let me, so that's how I kind of know now that I have to at least review this to see what's going on because this is screaming out negative because this is in FFFFF, so FFFFE, the count backward, D, C, B, A. Yep, they, this gives me a positive six, but this gives me a negative six. So maybe I just forgot to negate something I'll have to check here in a second. Let me do that and I'll get back to you. And exactly, I found my mistake. It is right here. You probably saw it while I was doing it, but you know, trying to think and talk and type and do all this at the same time can get a little tricky on my end too. And if it gets tricky for me and I've been doing this for six years, I can, you know, it's gonna be tricky for you as well, most part. So what's happening here, instead of negating AX, I'm negating CC, which is not good. I'm supposed to negate the AX register before moving it to F, and I believe then that will solve my problems. There's 12, 7, 6, and 9, as opposed to positive 18, positive 7, positive 6, positive 9. So yes, that handles the first part of this. So now I just have to repeat this here for E, F, D, and H, and just now we can do line 2. And now then we'll be halfway, halfway home. Okay, so now what do I get? Let me run this and run this again. So now I get positive 10, that's an A. Okay, negative six, that is FA here, F, 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 A. Yep, that is correct, that is a negative six. This is positive four, and whoops, now I have another one. My H isn't right, because I'm supposed to be getting, or did I do it? Yep, my H is supposed to be, oops, my H is supposed to be positive five and oops positive five and i am getting a zero out of it so let me check another time to see what i did wrong i swear i'm not doing these things on purpose i'm just talking and thinking and doing it's this line it should be this line of code that's causing my problem right here because i never actually copy back into h i, I don't know why i did this but it's supposed to be reversed sorry about that everyone i take b into ax i negate it so i get negative b I subtract C, I add A, and then I take the whole result and I move it into A. And let's see what happens now. Now I get my positive 5. Let me try this one more time, make sure everything, everybody's happy. So let's see, 18, 7, 6, 9, 10, negative 6, positive 4, positive 5. I am now ready to move on to part 2 because I have accomplished part 1. Okay, so move on to part 2. So now the nice part about the printout print statements is it's exactly the same from part one to part two. So I just copy pasted this down. I took the second part and I just commented out like I did before. And now I'm ready to go. So this is directly, let's say there's a big difference between using the register and going right to the variable. In this case, I'm allowed to go right to the variable because it basically says, hey, why don't you decrement H? But for other things, like with like coming again here, like this G or this is G plus equals six or where's like something like this. Neither G nor F are to be modified. It's just you're supposed to use temporary copies of those variables to figure out what this 
operation gets me to bring me back instead of T. So there's a big difference, and that's that's kind of part of the reason why I made two mistakes in the previous part. So this one, you, you would think it's more difficult, but if you think about it, g equals g plus 6 is just the same as g plus equals 6. And so I can actually get away with this by just doing add d comma 6. That's all I have to do for that one. And now this one is easy, just the same way. I can just say move f comma 16. Big difference, right? Because this is add plus equals, and this is just equals. So equals is a move. Plus equals is an add. Okay, so moving on here. So let's see. That's H. That's let's see about E. And so now move into. Now I have to start moving things into register. So I'm going to move G into the register. I am going to negate. I'm sorry. <laughs> negate AX. Almost caught myself. I did cut myself there. Subtract from AX F, and then I'm going to move it into E. And now actually the fourth line will print. I did E, F, G, and H here, so let's see, did I do it right? And so coming back again, here is all of this cool stuff, and oh my goodness, right, what am I looking at here? This, this bottom line is all I'm thinking about, everything else, this line here doesn't matter, and this will still be correct. But let's see, minus 26, oh boy, this is, uh, yep, that's minus 26 there, because it's basically minus 16 plus 10, 26. One zero, that's 16 in hex, positive. A is positive 10, 4 is positive 4, so I've done three quarters of this now, and now I'm ready to finish up and do the last part, these, four, these last four lines. And so now I can move this down one more time, and here I can move into the AX register 5, and then I can go ahead and subtract from the AX register E, and then I could move that into D. All right, and this one is just negating C, because I'm taking C and I'm basically, you know, equals negative C. I'm just reversing the sign. I'm just doing two's complement on it, so I'm allowed to do that. And so now with this one, this one's a little more complicated. There's more going on, so I'm going to move into the AX register CC. Then I'm going to add the AX register, I'm going to add E, and then I'm going to subtract from the AX register, I'm going to subtract H, and then I'm going to move everything into B. And then one final problem, I'm going to move B into the AX register. I am going to negate whatever's in the AX register, I am going to add C to it, I am going to subtract D from it, and I am going to then move it into A. And if that's right, the whole thing's done and our video is complete. Let's see. So now I'm looking at third row. It still won't affect the fourth row. Where is my, there we go. Negative one, bunch of Fs, correct. Negative 36, so let's see, 20 to C, D, E, F, G, 14. Yep, that's negative 36. This is negative six. And this is positive 31, 16 plus 15. So yes, we have done all 16 operations correctly. And we have printouts using dump regs in hex to show us that we have done everything correctly. And so that pretty much covers it. This is a good introduction to just getting yourself going. There's, you can see the reasons behind the math for the last three, four, five weeks, or three weeks, or however long we've been doing that, because we need to know hex, we need to know binary, we need to know all of this, because we're working at the lowest levels here in x86 assembly language. So as always, if you have questions, comment below, swordb at cud.edu, great ways to get a hold of me. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So as always, thanks for sticking it out with me, and uh, we'll see you at the next video. Thanks everybody, take care.